So today's adventure, I've got a 2016 Chevy Cruze with a P0299 turbocharger under boost code. I'm going to do a lot of talking in this one because it involves a lot of diagnostics from the driver's seat using scan tool data. So what you're seeing here is the entire road test in graphical form. And we're going to zoom in on different portions of it to determine do we have a turbocharger under boost condition, yes or no, and then decide what to do about it. So what we have here, the green line is the accelerator pedal position. That's what I was doing. So we were pegged at 100% throttle. The red line is the engine RPM. We can see that it rapidly jumped up and then steadily increased as I was accelerating hard. Yellow is desired boost and blue is actual boost pressure as what the car saw. Uh, the, the gray vertical line is the cursor that I've placed so we, we can view the values. And what we see here is that the boost pressure was 17.9 and in that moment the desired boost was 31.2. So we've got quite a big difference between desired boost and actual boost. So right away in that very first acceleration there is less boost than desired and we do have a turbocharger under boost. So let's take a look at some other times that I accelerated hard and let's see how consistent it is. Let's take a look at this one. Boost pressure 25.4 psi. Desired was 31.6 psi. So again, low boost pressure, lower than desired. We do have an under boost condition here as well. Right here, we're going to zoom in where I held the accelerator to the floor through the first, second, and third gears. And we're going to see what was the boost pressure doing versus desired boost. So I'm going to drag that cursor around till I find it. Put it in the very first gear. So that was looking like first gear when we were accelerating hard. Desired boost is 18.4 PSI. Actual boost 17.2, so a little bit lower, but closer than it was. How about here? We've got 17.2 PSI actual and 19.3 desired. And I'm gonna say that when I was doing this, it seemed like the car was lagging and lacking power. So desired boost 19.8, actual boost 18 PSI. So I would say, yes, we do have a under boost condition. Maybe it's intermittent, but it seems like it is consistent. I could look at some more data in the same way and come to a conclusion, but the next step would be to start inspecting intake ducts and exa for exhaust leaks, induction leaks, etc., which I've already kind of done under the hood you know, did a quick visual and did not see much. So gonna have to continue to look. I'm just gonna mention too, that before I started my road test and recorded data, I made sure that all of my various pressure sensors kind of agreed with each other with the engine turned off because I need to know that I can trust those pressure sensors. Okay, so check it out. I've installed a pressure smoke test device right here at the air filter hose. This would be air going in to the turbo and then it goes out of the turbo in a compressed form and goes through the intercooler, comes back out through this tube and into the engine. So we're checking from leaks all the way from here through the turbo, down through the ducting, the intercooler and the ducting coming back to the engine and finally to the engine and the intake manifold. So on the gauge, I've got my test pressure and the system pressure, and they're staying pretty close, and I don't see any smoke leaks. I don't hear any leaks, etc. So it looks like we don't have any boost leaks. So the next step would be to check for any exhaust leaks, and if we do not find any exhaust leaks, we would be very suspect of a faulty turbocharger, and we might start to look at, you know, turbocharger valves and lines and stuff like that. So in another one of my videos too, I show how engine oil being overfilled can cause a lack of power. And we do have an engine oil overfill condition here, probably one or two quarts overfilled. I also found the air filter lid 
the screws were loose initially and I thought, well, there it is. But then I decided that, well, that's not really gonna make an effect so long as the air filter is properly installed. It is pretty dirty though. So I'm gonna try to put a new filter on and just see if that makes any improvement on the engine's ability to breathe and produce boost. So I went out and I took another road test after I replaced that dirty air filter and before I drained out the excess oil because I was curious to see if it would make any difference. And we still have low boost. Uh, looks like we've got actual boost 19.6 PSI, desired boost 31.9 PSI. So still have some sort of problem with the low boost and it could be related to the engine oil, oil being overfilled. I'm going to drain out the excess oil and then do this test again and see if that makes any difference. I kind of doubt it because I don't really feel a major lack of power or some crazy vibration from an engine oil overfill, but I want to be sure. So I want to at least check that off the list as being a possibility. For my own curiosity, I also wanted to see what was the maximum airflow read by the mass airflow sensor before I replaced the air filter. And it looks like this was the one, two shift, the two, three shift and the three, four shift. It looks like we peaked pretty close to 80 grams per second. Now let's go take a look what happened after we replaced that air filter and just see if there was any difference at all. So this is what it looks like after the air filter replacement. Again, one, two shift, two, three shift, and three, four shift. Looks like we peaked closer to 100 grams. It's actually over 100 grams per second now. Previously it was about 80 or 85 grams per second. So just changing the air filter, we are able to actually see a difference here, but it still did not fix our problem and we're gonna continue diagnostics. So here we are a few weeks later. I did decide that the turbocharger needed to be replaced. All of the external components ended up being okay. I found here on the old turbo, we've got a lot of play in the wastegate linkage, the rod and the pin here. It's got a lot of wear. Got the wastegate itself pretty loose. So that would cause an exhaust leak around the turbine wheel inside here and cause low boost. Here's our new turbo. This gate is nice and tight. I cannot move it by hand. If you want this, you want that, you replace the whole turbo. So here's a little better view inside of there. It's a little loose. So I'm gonna replace the whole unit and that should take care of it. Here we are after the new turbo is fully installed, reassembled, I need to finish filling the coolant and then go take my final road test to confirm and we're gonna compare the data, should look a whole lot better. Okay, so here is a quick shot of the final road test. Here is the one, two, and three shift. Uh, blue line is boost pressure, yellow line is desired boost pressure. What we had before was boost pressure was lower than desired consistently, and now we have boost pressure is at or above desired boost pressure. So looks like we had a leaking wastegate on the turbocharger because of a worn out linkage. We replaced the turbocharger assembly and the car appears to be fixed.